Hey, what's up, Speakerfiles? Wellington here, and welcome to this video. CES 2020 was last week, it's all over now, and we now have some sort of idea of what speakers to expect in 2020. Now, what was announced doesn't mean that that's all we are going to be seeing throughout the year get released. Um, there will be still speakers come out as the year goes by. So stay tuned for those surprise releases. But we at least have an idea of what speakers were announced there that will be also starting to ship out this year. So, these are what I saw at CES 2020. Let's start off with LG. They announced two speakers, the PL5 and the PL7. They're about the same, same design, same everything. It's just that the PL5 is just a little bit smaller in comparison to the PL7. The PL7 is running two 58 millimeter drivers, while as the PL5 is running two 44 millimeter drivers. The PL7 has 24 hours of play time, that's what they promise, and the PL5 is promising 15 hours of play time. They are both IPX5 rated, so splash proof, and the cool thing maybe, or the coolest thing about them is just their design. I personally think they look pretty cool, and I was excited to see that LG is bringing something new and something very unique. They have their lights alongside the passive radiators, something new that someone hasn't done yet. So I was pretty intrigued to see that. And the only thing that's kind of confusing about that design is that when you look at the front of the speaker, it almost looks like it's both sides are like, the speaker is bent and facing you. Like every time I look at them, there is that illusion that goes on just because I'm used to seeing passive radiators to the side and these ones are like like this. So it basically looks like this, like the speaker is bent. I don't know, it just messes with my brain a little bit every time I look at it right away. So I have to adjust my thinking before actually understanding what's going on. So the design is a little bit trippy, but also looks pretty pretty dang good, at least personally, I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm excited to get those into the house and test them out and give you guys my full detailed, full opinion on them. I already did a video of me checking them out at CES. You, you can watch it, I'll link down to it down there. The other speaker that was announced is the JBL Boombox too. Um, as far as physical appearance, there's not really much difference. There's a slight design change around the PRs on the sides and the battery indicator light is now a little bit different, but overall the appearance is pretty much the same as the JBL Boombox, the original one. Um, there is only one other thing that I saw that's a little bit different, is that now it's also running the JBL Party Boost. Party Box? No, Party Boost, like the one they had or they have on the JBL Flip 5. So good news, you can now connect the Flip 5 to the JBL Boombox 2 when it comes out. But the bad news is you cannot connect the JBL Boombox 2 to your other older speakers that are not the Flip 5. So there is that. They, they say the Party Boost is a better connection, better technology. I personally have not seen the benefits yet, but if that's true, cool. If they're just using this as a scam to get people to upgrade in order to connect speakers together, that is not cool. Anyways, that's what they announced. Um, the speaker is still IPX5 rated. It's a 24 hour, you know, play time and it's going to be selling for about $450 coming out in spring. So I'll definitely get my hands on it, bring it in the house and try it out. So if you wanna see that when they come out, you know, subscribe to the channel so you can watch that video when it finally comes out. Enka also announced the Soundcore Flare 2. This one is coming out real soon, probably 
you know, in January, that's what it sounded like. Um, the main difference between the previous model and this model is that you're able to connect more of them together, like up to a hundred, and also the ring light that was at the bottom on the previous model is also now on the top too. So it looks better, I feel like, and I probably get my hands on it and bring it into the house and test it out. It's IPX7 rated, it's a 360 speaker, and I think it looks a lot better than the first flare. Might just be me, but I think it looks pretty cool. And yes, I'm definitely going to be getting my hands on it. It's only 80 bucks. It's probably will be out really, really soon. So stay tuned for that too. And then Tribet is also bringing the Soundbox Micro. It looks a little bit like the both sound link and also the sound quality is very close to it. Um, the only difference here from what I've been told is that this is going to be for the fraction of the price of the sound link micro. So I, I'm not entirely sure how much it's going to be, but it's gonna be coming out pretty soon. Um, they give you 10 hours of play time. It's running Bluetooth 5.0, it's IP67 rated, completely dust and waterproof, charges via USB-C. Like I said, I'm personally pumped to get my hands on it into the studio. I actually had a hands-on video that I did, I made at CES, but the background music was a little bit too loud to the point that when I was trying to upload it for you guys, um, YouTube was like, no, there's copyright content in here. So I just, I didn't end up um, posting the video because you know, TWS for stereo sound, stereo pairing, so copyright claims are not cool. That's what I saw. Um, the only thing that I feel like I was a little bit disappointed was with Sony. I was highly, highly anticipating the SRS XP42, but they did not announce that. Sony, that is not cool. I was really expecting that. I mean, I do understand that, you know, you, we don't need speakers every year, but They've done, you know, they've been bringing out speakers, starting with the um, the XP3, they were just, every single year, they were upgrading to something, to something, the next model, next model. And last year, they did not bring out the XP42 when they released the 32 and the 22. So I was expecting them to add that to the current line that they have, but they did not bring anything out. So. I'm not sure they might still release it maybe when the year is going by, like in the same year, but I was kind of disappointed for that. Um, anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. I wanna say thank you to LG because they completely sponsored my trip to CES. Like everything, they sponsored it. Thank you, Renee. You guys are awesome. <laughs> And I wanna say thank you to my fans here, my YouTube fans, everyone who follows me anywhere else. It's because of you guys that I'm able to do what I do. So thank you very much. Thank you for being my cool subscribers. Also, I'm getting a little bit more busy on Twitter and Instagram. So go follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You need to go do that, please. Go follow me. I'm really busy these days over there. I'm posting stuff, so. Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, okay? <laughs> I feel like I'm coercing you into doing something you don't want to. Anyway, if you don't want to, I mean, it's cool, but it's easier for me to communicate over there. Like when I went to CES, I, I asked people, hey, what do you wanna see? What do you want me to go check out? But because you guys don't follow me, nobody answered. I don't wanna have to make a video every single time I have a question for you guys. You know what I mean? So go follow me over there. Uh, I'll be sharing some stuff over there and I'm gonna be active. Instagram, Twitter, go follow me. All right, this is turning into a weird video, like coercing you into following me, but that's not it. I just want you to understand, okay. Anyways, guys, I love you so much. Thank you for, you know, making me what I am. I'm gonna try this year to give you as much good content 
as I can. So yes, thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.